Hi, I'm Kinkas and I'm a synth DIY guy and today we're doing a little bit different video. Uh, it's not a build video or a review video, it's more like a tutorial. People saw my Linstrument video and they were interested in how I integrated the Linstrument with the no-coast and the kind of patch that I made. So I'd like to very quickly show you uh, the ropes on how to configure the... Uh, I consider the no-coast a perfect voice for the Linstrument and uh, the Linstrument a perfect controller for the no-coast. Uh, for using it in melodic context, of course, not so chaotic and crazy. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at my patch. All right, let's see. Okay, so here's here's my instrument, and this is the No Coast. It's got the patch set up, but I want to plug it so I can show you step by step how to set it up. It's pretty simple actually. But first, there's a few things about configuration that need to be done on the instrument. For example, here in global settings, global settings, press that button. And then over here, where it says it's the next to last line, you have to you, you have the option of USB or MIDI output, right? So you do want the MIDI jacks to be the interface because that's what we're using to interface with the Nocos. Here's the MIDI output right here. Right now the USB is only for power. Okay, now what else in this window? Why well, have my velocity and pressure sensitivity set high? Even though we're not gonna use velocity for this patch. Well, here in the per, per split settings, we're going to use one channel MIDI mode, right? I'm using channel three, but you, you're going to use whatever channel you teach the no coast to watch for. So that could be any channel, it could be number one if you want to. I was just fiddling around using other instruments and no coast ended up being three. I've already programmed it to be three, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Now the band range, there's a glitch with the no coast uh, MIDI implementation. So if you have a large bend range, you get very glitchy top and bottom of the range. So when you go to the higher notes in uh, in your MIDI range, they glitch, uh, meaning they skip around values. They don't stay on the note. And the same happens to the low value. I found that if I set the bend range to 12, not 24, but 12, which is already plenty, you can do a whole octave glissando. That's plenty, really. If you set it to 12 and then you set the no coast uh, band range to 12, there is one octave setting, and I've set my switches here, one and two, to be octave up and down. There's one uh, position of these switches where you get no glitch, where you get a nice low note and a nice high note, no glitch. If you go up or down, then you get the glitch. But it's, you know, it's still five octaves which is awesome and it goes from fairly low to fairly high so just consider like that's the range of the instrument you can always go higher by turning the pitch knob up on the noco so you can tune it up an octave higher or two octaves higher if you want it to go higher you can't really go lower because then you get into glitch territory and there's no way to go lower there unless you send a negative voltage you could do that too i guess send a negative voltage to the one volt per octave input there and you can offset the pitch information from the MIDI section. I turned the timbre off because we're not going to be using it. Um, we're also not going to be using velocity because really we only have one CV output on the no coast and I think it's more uh, expressive to use it for pressure. You can sort of train yourself, your technique to use it as sort of a velocity. Now, to program the no coast to uh, pitch range to 12, you have to go into the program pages and then send it a CC message, a MIDI CC message. You look in the manual, it's probably easiest to do that via a computer. There is a Max for Live device that you can use if you have, if you use Ableton. And there's also a pure data version that I couldn't really wrap my hand, head around. What I did actually, I was doing this in the hotel room and I didn't have MIDI interface. What I did is uh, right here on special, you can choose CC faders. And then you get these faders uh, that are CC values, right? And what I did is I set one of these up, and the, the way you do that is you, you hold down the uh, CC, and then you can set the values. As you press these buttons here, you can set which CC no number you're sending data on. And I still set to 108, which is the, uh, the one that no coast is waiting for. And then what you do is you go back and now it's th this one right here, this fader right here is the one that's sending data on 108, right? 
And I had to use try on error because it doesn't give you a value, even if you press it down. So I had to sort of use uh, find the point uh, in this fader that tells it uh, two octaves. It was a little bit of try on error. It's definitely going to be easier if you guys just use a computer to send uh, a CC message. Okay, now let's take a look at the patch. I'm going to go back to and remove the CC faders and go back to this main and here's the patch as you can tell when I press as I press more as I apply more pressure we get a change in timbre and amplitude so this is the, now we're going to take a look at how I've set this up in the no coast so MIDI is just going straight into the MIDI here right and again I've set up the CVB to output uh, modulation wheel data I've set up the internal pitch bend range to 12 semitones up and down, All right? And uh, now what I'm, let's just remove these cables for now, okay? And as you can see, I'm using a little splitter. This is an IntelliGel splitter, but you can use those little ninja stars. And you can start by putting three cables in here, right? Because you're gonna split one signal two ways. It's precisely the CVB output, which is the the, pit, the modulation wheel data. Now that I'm gonna send in here to the um, to the mixer, right? The, the part that doesn't have a, a knob because I'm not gonna need to alter that CV at all. And then the other one goes into the multiply input right here, right? So that means that when I press down, I'm gonna be sending that pressure CV both to this mixer and to the multiply. Multiply is going to change the timbre. It's going to multiply the number of harmonics that my sound has. Now, what else? Here, we're going to send the contour, which is the envelope generator, right? We're going to send that contour to the other channel of the mixer right here. And that's so we're going to, uh, we control the amplitude with a mix between the, the, um, the contour section, the envelope generator, and the pressure data. And the way that I found that it works well is to have the envelope generator kind of soft like kind of about 15 minutes here right? or three o'clock as they would say and then the last thing you need to do is to send the um, this mixer right here right any one of these outputs from this mixer into the dynamic section of the no coast so the dynamics will now re reflect the uh, the mixture of the pressure cv with the uh, envelope generator right now I have my dynamics set also at three o'clock because I like it a little bit darker sounding and since this thing also is it's a low pass gate so it closes some of the harmonics too. And, uh, and then you play around with your, with your settings, right? With the envelope settings. I'm not using the slope at all for anything in this patch but you can, you can probably send it to the linear FM here as an audio rate oscillator and just have this down and then you have the option to turn the attenuator up. So now as you can see, changing the overtone section changes the overall timbre and then the multiply here, I have the, uh, the attenuator, the attenuator for the input and I can set how, how wide of a range of variation I want. Uh, and I also can set the, the initial multiply setting. And that's it. You can, uh, you can be super expressive like this already because you have two of the four extra levels of expression that the instrument gives you. One being the, the pitch bend, being uh, a wide range that you can just glide. And so I can glide between notes. I can also do vibratos, manual vibratos just like on a cello or a violin or any fretless string instrument like that. And, uh, and the other thing is the pressure. So I can start by... And the instrument is wonderfully uh, sensitive. So I, I feel very expressive, very musical using these, uh, these parameters. It's not like, uh, it's not weird and unmusical. So. So yeah, that's that's it. Um, 
I will periodically make more instrument videos because I'm super in love with this thing and I'm no longer attached to the idea that this channel should be DIY only. I think it's it's a good outlet for me to share things that I discovered that are related to electronic music and modular synthesizers in general or even music production. So I hope you all don't mind that and I'll still be making uh, DIY focused content always. All right, so that's it for now. Thanks for watching and uh, stay noisy. Click on like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.